Are you ready for some football? I know I am. Let's step into the huddle. You're listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by Line Star app, the top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go Line Star Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now here are your hosts, fantasy football experts Joe Pizapia and Scott Bogman. Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, and welcome to the pre-snap right here. On the Line Star app, it is me and my good pal Scott Bogman, and it's you. And we're breaking things down, all things NFL DFS, right here, courtesy of the Line Star app, the best tool site you will ever find for DFS. Go get that Line Star app and upgrade to the premium product ASAP. I'm telling you, it's so user friendly. It takes all the intimidation factor out of playing DFS, and we're going to do the same thing. So we are happy to be back for our second, say, actually, third season. What am I saying? third season of the pre-snap and every year i get a new co-host it seems like somehow that works out (laughs) but you know what this is one of my best friends in the fantasy industry he's one of the most knowledgeable football minds out there not just for nfl but for college as well he's one of the contributors to the fantasy black book every year he's also one of the co-hosts of the black book podcast in this league oh my god you're so busy you're so great i love you so much he's the (laughs) one the only scott bogman bogman i'm so excited to have you on this show this year my friend well, I'm excited to be here, Joe, and I, I want to say I appreciate you and Line Star for, uh, you know, giving me this platform. This is going to be fun, man. I love talking football. I, you know, uh, Arizona is kind of weird about DFS, but I love at least giving my recommendations if I can't legally play. Uh, and I love betting, and I was good at it last year. So, uh, yeah, you, you know, like honestly, for those people, like go back and look at Bogman's track record last year <laughs> on on the wagering stuff on the In This League podcast. It was insane. Like honestly, yeah. you were you were like pants on fire. It was kind of in, it was nuts, and uh, and we're going to be doing the wagering show together as well. So not only for DFS, but that wagering show is going to be back as well. So if you're somebody who just prefers the wagering end, we'll have a separate podcast for you. Otherwise, we'll be back every uh, Tuesday with the recap show. We'll have our Thursday preview show for DFS weekend and our Friday wagering show. So that's going to be hot. And like I said, man. Boggs, I'm excited because I want you to carry it over now. Now, now this oh, yeah. is time to, you know, 20, 2020s now. 2019 is in the books. I don't care about last year now. Yeah, we're going to get some momentum going here. Uh, I, I love doing this stuff, so uh, I'm happy to do this preview. This is going to be a lot of fun, man. I, I'm looking forward to this football season. Just give us some sports. Give yes, us some well, sports. They've been yes. playing right now. And I am just uh, I'm, I'm glad, you know, there was a lot of questions about uh, football coming back and all that stuff. But we're getting it. It's happening. I'm excited. It's happening. Everything's happening at once. we got hockey. we got NFL. we got NBA. We, I mean, it's almost like everyone decided to do all the sports in one week. That's what it feels like right now. But <laughs> what kind of a gonna... psycho would go over every sport in one week? That's great. <laughs> um... Hmm, I know a few of them, but uh, <laughs> we're going to go with the AFC today. So we're going to go team by team, kind of break things down for you. Give us uh, again, you know, try to get out there, give us a chance to give you the information you need here with some guys and how we see some of these offenses working out and, and some defenses as well, because Boggs is a big IDP guy. So we'll even get to some of the defenses as well as we talk to break down things DFS. So let's start with the Buffalo Bills. We'll start in the AFC East. And Josh Allen, obviously a very friendly DFS quarterback because usually the price is in a good spot. You know he's going to rush. You know he's going to have the rushing touchdown upside. I know there's been some talk at a camp already here with Josh Allen that he might not run as much, to which I say, no, no, that's a terrible idea. He is not good enough as a pocket passer yet to make that kind of transition. I think that's a lot of smoke. What do you think about that? Do you think it's just Josh Allen running amok again uh, for the second year in a row? Or do you think there's something to this and the acquisition of Stefan Diggs that they're going to try to balance out the offense a little more? I'm not going to buy this nonsense talk (laughs) from Josh Allen at all. I love Josh Allen, but the dude is a runner and he has instincts to run. And I don't know why you would pull that rug out from under him. I know they want him to get better as a passer. And look, adding better targets is part of that. And, uh, you know, getting Stefan Diggs in there, drafting a guy like Gabe Davis, who's going to be a good player off the bench. And, uh, you know, uh, adding in a, a nice pass catching back in Zach Moss is going to help his passing. But we want him in fantasy for those wheels. So I don't think he's going to run uh, much less than he did last year. And we want him around the goal line. That's what we want out of Josh Allen. So 
Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of the same from him. And I've, I've got him ranked really high in my season high. Uh, I know that he's uh, kind of one of those, you know, uh, swing and miss type of guys in DFS. So, uh, you know, I, but how many rush uh, he had? Uh, 510 rushing yards and nine touchdowns last year. You can't take that away from him. You got to let the dude I play. Agree. I don't game. think you could take it away from this offense because that was the difference maker last year. It wasn't Josh Allen making incredible third and long passes. It was Josh Allen on a third and 12 running for 20 yards and breaking the backs of defenses that got them into the playoffs in the first place. That's, that's yeah. what happened in those games. He would go out and make a play. And uh, look, I, I'm not giving up hope that he can't develop into a better passer as time goes on. But just because you add another receiver doesn't make a guy a, be a better quarterback right. <laughs> in the pocket necessarily. Um, so since we're on the wide receivers, let's talk about him. Last year, he had a really good rapport with John Brown. Uh, that was not surprising. We were very big fans of that. I think it's going to be cost effective this year, too. It might even be more cost effective. You know, usually he was in the, like that 6.2K range, somewhere in that. And, and Bogman, I know Stefan Diggs is there now. And Stefan Diggs is, you know, the home run hitter kind of guy, too. But. I'm curious, do you see us a lot of weeks being excited about this passing attack? Because I feel like it was more just the value of John Brown, and I feel like the value of Stefan Diggs is going to be a little bit higher in cost throughout the season, whereas Brown might be the interesting pivot. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I think they're going to eat into each other because they're kind of the same type of player in, in my eyes. I think Diggs does things a little bit better than John Brown, but John Brown led this team in yards from scrimmage with over 1,000 yards, and he had uh, fewer than 100 touches uh, less than or more than 100 touches less than uh, Frank Gore and Devin Singletary last year. So it's not like John Brown's going to be forgotten about. He's definitely going to come out of value this year. But I think the guy that I'm going to buy the most often uh, out of this team, uh, you know, depending on Josh Allen's price and who they're playing and all that stuff, is probably going to be Dawson Knox, the, the big tight end out of Ole Miss from last year. I think that's going to be the guy that I spend my money on uh, most among the bills, probably. All right, so uh, let, let's continue on with the running backs here. Devin Singletary uh, and Zach Moss, these are the two guys we've got right now. And Moss certainly seems to have more touchdown equity. Singletary has more PPR love, so when DK will probably be a little bit more onto him. And Moss is going to be somebody, I think, that if he gets that touchdown, he could be a nice flex play. But uh, Singletary is going to have to break one away. So that's going to be dicey, I think, when you're going through that. How do you see this backfield working out here? I mean, barring an injury, it does seem like, that Frank Gore role is going to be kind of like Zach Moss might be a better version of Frank Gore, certainly a younger one, but then again, who isn't <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I am four months older than, than Frank Gore. So uh, if he's my <laughs> age, you know, it ain't great. So uh, I, I think this is going to be one of the true 50, 50 splits in the NFL among running backs this season. I think uh, it's probably going to be annoying most weeks. Uh, Zach Moss would have been a much higher pick had he not had so many leg injuries, but this was his bad year uh, last year in Utah, like his coming off the injury year, 235 carries for 1,400 uh, and 16 yards, six scores and 28 catches for 388 and two scores. So that's his down year. So I like Zach Moss's upside more than I like Singletary's, but he has to prove that he can stay on the field, which uh, has been a tall task for him. So, All right, uh, let's move on. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you, brother. Uh, let's move on to the Miami Dolphins here. Uh, Fitzpatrick kind of came out of nowhere, and so did Devontae Parker. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, it's it's one of those things where it worked last year. I will continue to be optimistic about Parker. Uh, like what I saw last year, again, this was another favorite of the show because he was always priced into that, you know, middle wide receiver two kind of pricing and he gave you a whole bunch of wide receiver one games, and that's always what I'm looking for. Can Preston Williams also kind of work himself into this situation, even, let's say, as maybe a flex guy on DK where you look at Preston Williams and say, hey, maybe there'll be some volume there. Maybe Parker's still the home run hitter, but maybe Preston Williams and some tournaments can be a low-cost option at wide receiver or as flex as well. I, I love Preston Williams, and I really think he can work out here. But I think the big question is, is how are they going to split up the uh, targets between Preston Williams and Mike Gesicki, because as soon as Preston Williams went down and he was leading all rookies and not undrafted rookies because he was undrafted, uh, but all rookies when he went down, I believe that was week eight or nine last season with the knee injury. And after that, Mike Gesicki really took off. So I'm curious as to, are they, you know, 
are they going to both fill that same kind of slot role because Gasicki ran so much out of the slot last year, or is Preston Williams uh, going to continue to be the guy? If I had to pick one, it would be Preston Williams. So I think I'll be buying him early in the season pretty often. All right, so let's get to the running backs here. Jordan Howard and Matt Breida. Look, neither of these guys, because it's other shared backfield situation, have a lot of appeal in my mind, unless there's an injury and one of them <laughs> is the only guy standing. Yeah. Uh, and, and that being said, too, I, I just, once again, I feel like this offense is, I know they're going to try to run the ball a little bit more this year. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And I think Howard's going to be just fine. He'll have a decent floor every week. But once again, the ceiling is limited. And Breed is the opposite. Like he has ceiling, but to me, not enough floor. So we'll see how things uh, move on from there. Um, let's move on to the Patriots. And uh, obviously, new quarterback in town. We got Cam <laughs> Newton there. And uh, this we got to talk about because, you know, Cam Newton's not that far removed from being an outstanding fantasy quarterback. And I'm fascinated to see where the pricing drops so far early in the season and, and where he's going to be because it feels like at least early on, there's going to be potential here for cam newton to rush for some touchdowns rush for some yards throw for a touchdown and be a decent dfs quarterback until the price goes up and all of a sudden something happens now i don't love the wide receiving core i don't know what julian Edelman is without tom brady i've never seen it before neither of you yeah. no one has so no one can tell you and if they're telling you they're wrong they're just making a guess so before we go any further let's just talk about cam standalone cam newton i think we're going to be involved with some cam newton this year at least early on, what do you think about this move the Pats made? Um, I, I mean, I love it because I am not a Jared Stidham guy. So uh, I was real happy that they got uh, they got Cam Newton, you know, obviously a former MVP to, to move this offense. You're right. We don't know what this is going to look like. Uh, we know that Cam has worked with Christian McCaffrey a bunch. So James White, I think he's probably the safest, especially early in the season. But uh, the wide receiver core, I mean, I think you only buy Edelman. You're not buying a tight end. You're not going to put money down on a running back that's not named James White early. So I think Cam early Newton and Bobushka. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of Cam Newton naked in hats. That's what we're going right. to be doing here. <laughs> exactly. So it's James White. You may be able to buy Edelman if he's cheap. Uh, but uh, other than that, I don't see myself buying a lot of Patriots early in the season in DFS. What about the Pats defense? This was a dominant defense last year. And at some point, you know, it was a good return, despite the fact it was super expensive. It was a really good return because they were putting up massive amounts of points. It's always been a good turnover defense. Do you see with all of the losses that they had, and they had some significant veteran losses here, they might be younger and faster, but they might not be quite as good. How do you think that's going to react in 2020? Um, I think... Um... I, I think it's going to be a little worse. Also, they're not going to have Tom Brady, you know, leading the charge oh, as yeah, that well. Guy. So, uh, you know, uh, they're probably going to have a couple more snaps on defense and guys get a little more tired in the fourth quarter. So I think overall it's going to dip a little. I think you have to say that uh, going into this year with the losses of not only the de defensive players, but also Tom Brady. All right, here we go. The Jets. Hold your nose. All right, let's try to do this. <laughs> Uh, Adam Gase ruins everything. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw that show. Adam ruins everything. Oh, it's yeah. actually about oh, yeah. Adam Gase. People didn't realize that it's uh, it's, it's actually <laughs> a different Adam. Uh, he ruins everything. And it looks like he's trying to ruin Le'Veon Bell. But is this all for naught? Is this all just a bunch of nonsense? And then when we look at the end of the year, it's going to have a ton of touches. And at the end of the year, everybody's fired. and It doesn't matter. And everybody's moved on from because that's where I'm going, because I still think they have no choice, especially Perryman's now banged up. To me, there's no choice. It's you have to get the ball to Le'Veon Bell, whether you like it or not. I don't care, Adam Gase, whether you like it or not. It just seems like it's going to end up being kind of what ended up happening last year, where they thought they were going to go to other guys. And I think you kind of mentioned this on the Black Book pod earlier in the week. So what are your thoughts on Le'Veon Bell this year coming into 2020? I have so many shares of Le'Veon Bell. And oh, so were uh, you just wishing it to be good then, or are you being realistic? No, no, I'm being realistic. He had the fifth most snaps of running backs last year, Le'Veon Bell did. So uh, you maybe that takes a hit, but the volume is still going to be there. I'm sorry, Frank Gore is 100. We just talked about how he's my age. That's not good. You know, uh, Lev Bell uh, looks fresh. He loves running behind the line. I mean, I know they're talking about he's been unimpressive at camp, but if you watch his style of play, it's not really conducive for camp and, and all that stuff. So uh, he's a patient runner. He'll find his holes, pick his spots, and they want to use him more as a receiver this year too. So 
I'm I'm in on Lev Bell. Uh, I'm not going to jump off yet just because people are panicking. No thanks. All right. Now the one thing I am very much in on in my season long and in DFS, especially in the full point PPR and DK, is going to be Jameson Crowder. Um, the volume is going to be there. The targets are going to be there. The upside is limited, but we're talking like a weekly four of a dozen points, and I just feel like that's important. And when you're trying to build lineups, especially cash game lineups, you want to have guys like Crowder in them because, you know, kind of like <laughs> Eric Decker of yesteryear where you could just kind of set him and forget him and you know you're getting a good uh, points. And and I don't think the pricing uh, on FanDuel or on DraftKings is going to get absurd ever because the Jets offense is always going to be limited to a certain extent. So Crowder is a guy along with Bell that I will have and I will be talking about a lot on this program in the next couple of weeks for the entire season Sam Darnold, not a guy I'm going to be talking about. Sorry, Jet fans. I hope it works out for you. I really do. (laughs) But we got to keep it real here on the program. That's what we do. So let's go to the next one. Let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens. They have a pretty good quarterback for fantasy. I don't know if you noticed. His name is Lamar Jackson. And I got to say, there were only like a handful of people, and two of them are hosting the show right now, that had (laughs) Lamar Jackson very high in rankings and out of college thought that he should have been drafted maybe as the second overall quarterback in that draft. And one of them is sitting right next to me and it's Scott Bogman. So now that everybody else is here at the party, uh, Lamar Jackson is going to be very expensive. Uh, Is he worth that premium? Uh, I mean, some weeks he definitely is going to be worth that premium. And and that's, that's where we got to, we're going to have to sort it out this year is when, when are we paying up? Because just looking already, you know, week one, he's like a thousand dollars more than anybody else. So uh, not surprising, but, uh, you know, they say they're going to run him a little bit less. I'm not buying it at all. I'm not buying it. Everyone's running less this year. Really? Yeah. Really? Dude's going to run. Uh, It ain't it ain't broke. Don't fix it. You know, I bulked up uh, before last offseason and put on a little more muscle this offseason as well. So uh, I'm excited to see him run. And, uh, you know, they got a ton of running backs there. That might be a mess. And the wide receivers are never that great. But uh, we know two things we can count on in Baltimore are Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. Yeah, well, and that, that was the next part here is Mark Andrews has been very solid. That's been a great combination. And it's really funny because I feel like that is the first combination that we're really talking about that we're excited about. You know, we've gone through an entire division in the AFC. And this is the first pairing where like, yes, Yes, this is a good pairing. Andrews, I feel very good about. I also feel good, and and I used it a lot last year, and I think at least early on I'm going to try it again because I know there's a big J.K. Dobbins narrative running around here, but every time somebody wants to get rid of Mark Ingram, every year he ends up having a 1,000 yards and a bunch of touchdowns. and It's going to end up like Frank Gore. I mean, (laughs) he's on that path. He basically is. So uh, that, to me, is another pairing because if Lamar is running amok, doing his thing and getting close to the goal line, then Mark Ingram's going to have some touchdowns as well. I like the pairing of those two, or even as a trio, I know it's not the most obvious, you know, stack, but I think it's one of the better ones out there. Uh, I also want to talk about Marquise Brown too, because this is a home run hitter kind of wide receiver. It's not a, it's not a cash game guy. It's a tournament guy, but I do think he bears witness. And if he's healthy, I'm optimistic that early on, you might be able to get some lineups with him on the cheap and a couple of them like last year, he hit big last year early on. It's about health. It's about staying on the field for him. If he can do that, it's not going to be a high target thing. He's like the anti-crowder, right? But at the same yeah. time, I do think this is a guy we have to pay attention to early in the season, especially before the price goes up. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of potential. Remember, he's dragging around that Liz Franck injury last year uh, for most of the season, too. So his speed is incredible. And we'll get to see it at a full clip this year. So he should be even more dangerous. All right, let's move on to the Cincinnati Bengals here. New quarterback, Joe Burrow. And I guess here's the fun question. Rookie quarterback, so he's enticing, especially after a record-breaking season in college. Do you think with the mobility, because we all saw him do it. We all saw, we all saw Joe Burrow, like, you know, things break down. He would go run for first downs and uh, a pretty mobile guy. He himself, can motor. Not, yeah. He can motor. Uh, I think he is going to be a very interesting play early on. And one that I think we're going to pay close attention to depending on the matchup, because with Mixon now locked up for the next four years, which was a no brainer. Anybody who thought that wasn't going to, how would you not migraines go away? Oh man, my coach, my head hurts. Oh wait, my new contract. Oh, never mind. I'm good. I'm feeling good. Yep. 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 Feeling good. Oh man. My back hurt too from carrying the weight of (laughs) the burden of this team for so many years, but you don't draft a rookie quarterback 
and then not support him with a run game. You don't downgrade to Gio Bernard or Travion Williams or somebody like that. You have to have Mixon if you're going to be successful at all. So it was a foregone conclusion for me. Uh, we'll get to Mixon in a second, but Burrow, I think, has some intrigue as a tournament QB early on, too, before people really catch on. And as long as the wide receivers are healthy, too, I think there's some upside here. I mean, I hate to say this because I'm a Steelers fan, but I'm really excited to see what Joe Burrow has this year. I think, yeah. you know, just his huge turnaround in college last year, 60 touchdown passes, uh, 368 rushing yards. But you got to remember at college, they count sacks as rushing yards. So if he didn't have those, he would have been up over 600 rushing yards with five touchdowns as well. So the guy can he's got wheels, too. So if that line does break down a little bit like we expect it to, because that's the weakling of this team. He's going to have a couple nice run plays, and he's got a great wide receiver core in A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, John Ross was another high value, all that stuff. Uh, I'm excited to see what he can put together for this year. So uh, don't be surprised if I'm in on Joe Burrow early because his uh, price should be pretty nice early. Yeah, and I'm going to be with Mixon too because I think that's the combination for them. It's, it's, it's Burrow making plays, and there's a part of me that likes – Burrow and Mixon together more than I like just cherry picking which wide receiver that day it's going to be because it could be green. It could be Boyd. <laughs> you might have to differentiate in lineups, but I think Mixon is the one thing that I feel really good at. And this is another guy typically, you know, last year on Fandle, he was around like 7.5. Sometimes he'd get jump up into the eight, five range, depending as the season went on, he got better, but you know, anything around there, anything around eight K on average, that's a really good investment for Mixon. Cause I think, you know, when you look around, you're looking for bell cow backs, right? And he's one of the yeah. few out there. Yeah, the dude is supremely talented, and he has talent around him now. Uh, so shouldn't see so many stack boxes and all that good stuff without Andy Dalton and Ryan Finley there. So uh, I think I think he's going to be in for a huge year. Mixon is a supreme talent. All right. Now, from supreme talents to, well, we're not sure sure talent. So let's, let's talk about the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Baker Mayfield. <laughs> I don't know if he's a supreme talent, but I do say this. You know, last year, Kareem Hunt was a very popular choice on this program. <laughs> Nick Chubb was for the first half of the season that when Kareem Hunt showed up, we kind of moved and said, well, you can kind of get the same points in a full point PPR and pay like, you know, two grand less for Kareem Hunt. And uh, that was true. And I think there is enough for both of these guys to be successful. Uh, I would certainly favor Chubb a little bit more on FanDuel. I will favor Hunt a little bit more on DraftKings. That's going to be my approach, just typically speaking. And it's because, again, the scoring system, the half point PPR and FanDuel, I want to pay a little bit more attention to the touchdown upside. And I want the floor points on DK with Kareem Hunt. Is that your approach to you? Or do you think that this backfield is going to be, you know, somehow different in your opinion? No, no, I think it's going to be a pretty even split between those guys. But I do think they're going to run the ball more, which is going to take the ball out of uh, Baker's hands uh, as much. So, uh, I think early, I'm going to probably not buy too many shares of Jarvis Landry, especially, you know, coming off his hip injury, OBJ, which is probably when you want to buy him because it's when he's healthy is early in the season. But, uh, Baker, I don't know. I, he just, uh, I think they're not going to instill as much trust into him and they're going to give this to this awesome running game and they upgraded the offensive line too. So let those guys block. Let's, uh, have the running game work. The defense is pretty good too. Both guys i'm not against like going the if the, if it, if they're facing a weak rush defense or a weak linebacking core combination man like i'm excited about yeah. jumping on together then you know because that could just be a field day where you see like you know one guy having 100 yards rushing the other guy having like 60 yards rushing but cream hunt could have half a dozen catches too like you could just see those guys just running amok and i think that might be their best path to win games um let's talk about the steelers too let's start with the defense of the steelers because they were fantastic last year and put in some bad spots by a terrible offense at times. Um, this year, this defense, obviously, you know, very much on the higher end of the pay scale. I think it's going to be worth it some weeks, depending on who they're playing and what that schedule portends. We'll see how that continues to go, but they have a lot of upside there on that defense. And, you know, kind of like last year where the Patriots just dominated Pittsburgh could be in that same kind of mold. And I think they're going to challenge for this North. I really do. I think they're going to challenge Baltimore. Ben Roethlisberger's back. Uh, are people going to be slow on that? Do you think they're going to slow play Ben Roethlisberger saying, well, you didn't play it all last year? Because I think that's wrong if you do. Um, I don't know. I think I might be right. Uh, I, I'm not. I don't think that Ben is unhealthy by any stretch of the imagination. But 
They added uh, Anthony McFarlane in the draft. Uh, a lot of positive reports on Benny Snell. Uh, James Conner looks the part. I mean, I you know, uh, if you've listened to stuff that I've said before, I'm not confident that James Conner can stay healthy for a full season. But I think with the defense playing as well as it did last year, like you mentioned, and, you know, really creating those splash plays. That's what Tomlin wants. He wants turnovers. That was his big thing when he was defensive back coach for the Bucks in uh, the Super Bowl. Remember when they had all those turnovers against uh, Ra- uh, uh, the Raiders and um, uh, Rich Gannon. I couldn't remember his name for a second. But uh, that's kind of where it started with him. He loves those splash plays. So they are going to be worth it some weeks. And, um, you know, they, they get Stephon Tua back. He's a big, big part of that defense as well. And I think they're going to run the ball a ton. So I'm a little lower on Ben, specifically early in the season, uh, just because I think, you know, with him working back, they're going to run the ball a ton. I think that's going to be the point. All right, so how does that affect Juju? Because you and I are both big fans of Juju Smith-Schuster back in the slot. Does that affect him? Does that affect Deontay Johnson? Because Deontay Johnson is another guy early on for me. I look as a GPP upside. He's going to be really priced friendly on both sides. How do you feel about the wide receivers here then? Yeah, I think that it's probably going to affect uh, Deontay and James Washington the most. I think Juju's going to get his. I think Juju has proven to Ben, you know, that he is a supreme talent. He's one of those uh, top end wide receivers. And I think after a couple games, hopefully the Seals will work out an extension with them because I don't want to go into free agency with that dude next year. But, uh, you know, I think Deontay and James Washington could be adversely affected early in the season. So uh, lots of running from the Steelers, I expect, this year. All right, let's move on now to the South, and let's start with the Texans, who in the offseason dealt DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson in a bag of footballs. And uh, I hate this. I mean, you're a team that runs up the middle more than any other team, and you got the guy whose biggest weakness is that, and he's got a bad back. I mean, I just, I'm out. I'm out. And if I'm wrong, okay, fine. But I'm out. Uh, Seriously, done out nothing to do with it bogman are you out on that david johnson as well i have no shares of david johnson this year so i think i have him loan off i have a bunch of shares of duke so i I think uh you know duke in season long is going to end up being the uh way better value than david johnson even if david johnson is the leader in carries but i think my biggest concern you know you can pay for watson pretty much any week Uh, i think he's going to be a you know exactly what he was last year a fantastic quarterback I agree. but it's figuring I, out I, what wide receiver you're gonna want on a week-to-week basis out. here's what i'm doing no see i'm not even doing that it's him and will fuller if will fuller okay. is healthy and on the field that's it it's him and will fuller i've seen enough in my years here doing this kind of coverage where i know they're established together will fuller is, has got touchdown upside for days in this offense and and it's just whether or not he's healthy and sure he is going to get hurt in games and he's going to come out of games is going to crush you in those lineups. But in the meantime, it's Will Fuller until the price gets too much or he gets hurt and that's it. And I'm just, either that or again, just like Cam Newton by himself, it's Deshaun Watson by himself and I'm looking for offense other places. That's that's my take on this Texans team because I don't I think it's just too difficult to look at Cooks or look at Cobb and say that there's enough there any given week because I think you're just throwing darts basically. Yeah, I mean, if Will Fuller gets hurt, I, I wouldn't mind throwing down a couple bucks on Brandon Cooks if he's cheap. But for the most part, I mean, you're right. Will Fuller's the guy wait, that offers wait, the upside. Wait, wait. If, if, when, but how, when, how Will many games? How many games has Brandon Cooks missed in the last uh, yeah, he's five missed seasons? A fair too. Uh, in three the last games. How many seasons? Five. He's missed three games. Yeah, he's had well, five Will concussions. Yeah. He's missed three games. So yeah, Will, Will Fuller. Will is going Fuller to get hurt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm That's talking about thing. Cooks. No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm saying th- when, when when Will Fuller gets hurt, yes, then Brandon yeah. Cooks is a much better player. It's not oh, if, yeah, it's yeah, always- yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about Cooks. I was I was yeah, too busy. I was too too busy defending Cooks. Yeah, to, defending uh, to the listen. honor of uh, Brandon Cooks. Jeez, Brandon yeah. Cooks and you, you know. I'm the only one that does. Horse. Yeah, I'm well, the only one that does. It's his fourth team. So you know. it well, but you know, but what does that tell you? Fourth team, if you're that great, why are you bouncing around? Yeah, no, you're right about that for sure. At least, so, at least you're on. like the. It's like the end of Princess Bride. You're like Andre the Giant waiting underneath there, and he's <laughs> jumping down in the flowing white gown like the princess, and you're there to catch him. There's Bogman That's catching right. Brandon Cooks. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. an image for you. I, I, I want it's you me to... catching Brandon Cooks and Andre the Giant. That's how. No, it you're Andre the Giant in this scenario. Oh, I'm Andre the Giant. Oh, you're okay. The princess. That's he's what the everyone princess. calls me. Yes, <laughs> Andre the Giant. 
Uh, all right, let's talk about the Indianapolis Colts. They've got a new quarterback, and it is Phillip Rivers. And Phillip Rivers is upgraded to one of the best offensive lines in football after playing last year with one of the worst. Um, yes, we all know everyone's excited about Jonathan Taylor, but I think there's some money to be made early on with Marlon Mack. I still think early on this dude's going to get a lot of the carries. Ownership's going to be super low, and people are going to go, oh, look, Marlon Mack had a, had a good game. Huh, wow, that's crazy. Um, now, in terms of the wide receivers, too, T.Y.'s still there. If is healthy on the field, certainly something to look at. Paris Campbell, another guy along with Michael Pittman who have upside. We'll see if Campbell in year two can make some strides. We'll see if year one for Pittman can be a success. What is your take on this Colts team and this offense overall? Is it a little vanilla for you in terms of DFS, or do you see some upside here? No, I see some upside in Taylor, especially early on. I think he's going to win that job away from Marlon Mack fairly quickly. So uh, I'm, I'll, I'll be in on Jonathan Taylor after he makes this not a 50-50 split, which I think probably around week three. Uh, then I, I'm not the biggest fan of Paris Campbell. Uh, I'm, I know a lot of people are in this year, but, uh, he's really the slot wide out when Naheem Hines takes snaps out of the slot. And so does Zach Pascal and T Y Hilton will line up there on occasion. So I think the guy I'm going to buy the most from the Colts is probably going to be the rookie Michael Pittman, because I think he's going to be, you know, probably not week one. Obviously we want to see what the but role is for sure. Do you think he's going to be on the field all the time? I think he's going to be on the field all the time. I think he's going to play that X receiver and just that's his role. All right. Uh, Jacksonville decided that they don't like productive running back. So they cut Leonard Fournette. And now uh, Ryquel Armstead is going to be the guy. Gardner Minshew is still there, obviously. But the guy that I really want to talk about is DJ Shark because I was super impressed with him last year. Uh, I think the ownership roster percentage will be low. I think the upside is huge. I still think this is a team that will be playing from behind. And that means garbage time, good things for DJ Shark. I really like him. He's kind of the standalone guy for me that I will be looking for one-offs. And I'm I'm looking for, you know, guys who are going to be good return on investment in DFS. I think Shark's going to be one of these guys. I can guarantee you every week you're going to look up kind of like Devontae Parker last year where you're like, yeah, like it's just it's too good to pass up. He's going to be in my lineup. What are your thoughts on Shark and the rest of this Jaguars team? Yeah, I think Shark and D.D. Westbrook are probably going to be my buys from the Jaguars for most of the season. I'm not in on uh, uh, Tyler Eifert. You know that. He finally did stay healthy last year, but I'm I'm just wary of him. Uh, so, yeah, Shark uh, Chark is going to be the guy, but I, I think Didi might be a better buy some weeks. You know, just uh, I think he's improving every single year, and like you said, they're going to be down, and this backfield is a complete and total mess now that Fournette's gone. You know, uh, Armstead hasn't done a bunch after recovering from COVID, Yet he came back on the 20th and still hasn't done a lot. Uh, so D- Divino Zigbo is probably going to be your leading snap guy for week one for the Jags with Chris Thompson maybe being second and maybe the undrafted rookie James Robinson out of yep. Illinois State getting carries. Hard it's pass. gross. And I just yeah. hard pass. I'm out. Hard pass. I'm out. Hard pass. They're right there with David Johnson for me. I'm out. I want nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> let's do the last team here in this division. Uh, and it's the Tennessee Titans who had a great finish to the season, a great run to the playoffs, going into Baltimore, winning, going into New England and winning. It was just tremendous. And there was a lot of money to be made last year with the trio of Tannehill, Derrick Henry, and A.J. Brown. That was a good trio. They were very economic. <laughs> you had to pay up <laughs> some weeks for Derrick Henry. But Tannehill was cheap and A.J. Brown was cheap. And if you had all three of them and A.J. Brown caught that touchdown – Man, it was a good day. <laughs> it was a really good day. Can John <laughs> Smith work himself into this conversation as well? Uh, John Smith is my bugaboo in DFS. Every single week that I picked, picked him last year, he would have one catch for four yards. And then the next week I'd say, no, I'm done with John Smith. I hate his guts. Six catches for 70 yards. You know, So uh, I, I, I'm going to probably just avoid – uh, picking John U. Smith. I'll let you lead the John U. Smith charge this year, Joe. And, and I, I, I'll stick with, uh, you know, letting people know when to pay up for Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown. And that's probably all that I'm going to buy on this team because I hate Corey Davis. I'm not in that Humphreys. And there's no other running back worth it. And Tannehill will probably be overpriced this year as he was underpriced last year. All right, crazy question. Could Corey Davis be this year's Devontae no, Parker? No, okay. no, all right. no. I just, I want to, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're still my boo. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, done. Uh, he didn't do it with Mariota, and then he didn't get on with Tannehill. 
So I'm just uh, oh, you know, he did I actually thought, the first week they were together. If you recall, week, one week, Corey David and I went, Oh my god, it's happening! It's yeah, all happening. Uh, I was having all the feels, as the kids broken say. Broken clock is right twice a day, Joey. You know, so I, I'm uh, not gonna. I'm not going to invest. No, thanks. Good point. I can't argue with that. And uh, yeah, and broken clocks. I can't argue with broken clocks. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the Denver Broncos here. Uh, Drew Locke is going to be the quarterback for the entire season. We think uh, we brought in two run- uh, running back here to go with Philip Lindsay. It's kind of like uh, Melvin Gordon, um, excuse me, Melvin Ingram syndrome. It's like every year, everybody wants to replace Philip Lindsay and every year he rushes for a thousand yards. Yeah. Uh, but Melvin Gordon and Lindsay in this backfield, uh, this is so muddy. I, I can't see myself getting excited about this. I really can't. I just, it's frustrating. Um, I think Lindsay will be there enough to upset your Melvin Gordon shares. And it's not that Gordon can't have some good games. I'm sure he can, but I think it just kills some of the upside. And therefore I think this is going to be a pass for me a lot of weeks as well. Yeah, it definitely does. Like you said, the situation is muddy. Like taking one of these guys in season long is fine. But for DFS, when you don't have to on a week to week basis, why even bother with it? So unless somebody gets hurt, which if someone does, it's most likely going to be Philip Lindsay with the wrist injury. It's affected him two years in a row. So uh, they, he said he added uh, 10 pounds of bulk this offseason. I was like, was, was it all on his wrist? Because that's where it needs to go. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I, I think you That'd know me. It's actually weird to see like, oh my God, <laughs> 10 pounds this. of muscle. On one yeah, wrist, oh, I oh, I did a lot of uh, wrist curls. <laughs> That's all I did the whole off season was wrist curls. Uh, uh, I, I think you know me, Joe. My guy that I'm going to own the most on the Broncos is Cortland Sutton. I talked about uh, yeah, the black well, book last year and, and okay. uh, this year too. He was my my undervalued wide receiver two years in a row in the black book. Is Cortland? Well, Sutton. look, Still last year it was it was Godwin, it was Cortland Sutton and DJ Moore. How'd that work out, boys and girls? If you didn't get your black book. I don't know what, I mean, you're just doing it wrong. Go get your black book on Amazon. That's where you know these things. And you're right. Cortland Sutton's going to be undervalued. Judy's presence there. It might not equate right away for Judy, but I think just his presence on the field is going to keep defenses honest. And that means Cortland Sutton, who catches, you know, is one of the better deep ball guys out there. is going to be a good possibility here. And I think the new OC is going to throw the ball a little bit more, be a little bit more aggressive. That's a good thing. And I think Noah Fant will be a nice cheap tight end to some weeks. All you got to do is catch a touchdown to be a tight end one. And I think Noah fan can do that box. There's going to be some weeks where I think that's going to be, you know, one of these things you look back on, he's going to be so cheap and you just go, yep. Boom. There's your touchdown from Noah fan. He paid off bingo bango. Yeah. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but uh, they did say that the, uh, the stats from George Kittle's rookie season were eerily similar to Noah fans. So uh, Hmm. that's something we could see if if someone's going to break out. If someone's going to break out, I really, really think that it could be uh, Noah Fan. I'm excited about him this year. Mm. Uh, speaking <laughs> of breakouts, let's uh, talk about Clyde Edwards Alaire and the Kansas City Chiefs because everybody loves this guy. And I, look, I think they should. I think Andy Reid has shown you a good enough track record with his rookie running backs that uh, between Kareem Hunt and go back to Westbrook, go back to Sean McCoy. We could just go back on and on and on that Hilaire looks like a good investment. Now the question is going to be, of course, how much is it going to cost us? So your approach here with this team, is this as simple as, Hey, in tournaments, you're going to go with Mahomes and Tyree kill or, and then, or, or him and in, in, in cash, you're going to go with him and Kelsey and Hilaire. Like how do you kind of pivot this around and, and make this uh, all work for Kansas city? Cause it's going to be super expensive. So you're going to have to find yeah some kind of cost saving somewhere for these guys. So how do you approach this? Is this just cash for you when it comes to the chiefs? What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of cash games. You want to stack chiefs. Uh, I'm, I'm with you uh, on that for sure. Clyde Edwards, a I I'm not buying him in any season long because I think the investment is just too high as a first round pick, but uh, you better believe I want to watch him and enjoy what he's doing. So I'm going to be buying a lot of him in DFS. So I'm excited about what Clyde Edwards Alaire can do too. I think people think that I hate him because I'm just saying not to invest in him in season long. I just think that investment costs too much in DFS. I'll buy him probably a bunch of times. I'm excited about him. Yeah. I'm excited about Josh Jacobs with the Raiders too. I mean, I'm not gonna spend too much time on, on the, on the chiefs. Cause you guys know, I mean, yeah. you know what, you know what this is, you know what this right. is. It's going to be expensive. If you want to do it, do it. And look, and there's going to be some weeks where it goes off in tournaments. And it's going to be the highest thing too. And that's always, if you love a cash game lineup, the same thing I say on the MLB show, 
if you love a cash game lineup, it doesn't hurt to throw it in a tournament for five bucks and see what it does because there's so much dead money in tournaments when people are trying to be different instead of trying to be good. And the bigger the tournament, the more different you get and the less good. It's just a fact. <laughs> uh, let's go into the Las Vegas Raiders here. I, I love Josh Jacobs. I think he's going to take a little step up in uh, year two. Uh, Darren Waller had a great rookie season. So in full point PPR, I get it. But on FanDuel, I struggle because he doesn't have a lot of touchdown upside. You know, only a few touchdowns last year. Does that change this year? Uh, or does, you know, Ruggs kind of become the guy that they hope he's going to be? And that's why they took him first overall. Uh, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about Ruggs uh, for sure. I, I think that he is if, if he's cheap the first couple weeks, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be buying. I think. Similar upside to uh, Marquise Brown for Henry Ruggs. I think Ruggs, oh, man, that's tough. I don't know who i pick between those guys. I'll, tell, I'll, tell you what, I'll take Brown. I'll take Brown because, he, you know. So for want... fantasy, I'm going to take Ruggs, and it's because the Raiders should be down more often and throwing the ball later in the fourth quarter. Garbage time counts too, Joey. So I'm going to take I'm going to take Ruggs so, uh, for, for fantasy, for uh, flat out wide receiver. I think I'd probably still take Brown, but that's real close. That's a coin flip to me. I love, both I just, I just trust the quarterback. I actually trust Lamar Jackson more than Derek Carr. <laughs> yeah. But I also trust Baltimore defense no, you're to right. not you're be not down right. in the fourth yeah. quarter and they've got so many running backs. You know what I mean? So if you're going to get something with Brown, it's got to be in the first, probably two, two and a half quarters, uh, with rugs, he could be, you know, he could do nothing until the fourth quarter and then outperform. Now, speaking, of, speaking of defenses, too, we kind of glossed over the Chiefs there, but I love the Chiefs defense this year because they're going to have some matchups against the Broncos, Raiders, and Chargers. And yeah. you know what? Man, uh, there's going to be a lot of defense. bad QBs, possible turnovers. And even if yeah. th their defense isn't good, like they're not, they're not great at uh, stopping teams, but what the offense is so good at is creating them, uh, you know, obvious passing situations. So, you create right. more turnovers doing that. The defensive ends can pin their ears back and rush a little bit more. So you get those splash plays late in games from the chiefs. Even if you're not getting points from them, not allowing points, you're getting those splash plays back. So the chiefs are good in DFS for sure. All right. We'll keep it simple here at the end with the chargers, because when it comes to the chargers right now, I think Keenan Allen's is still a decent full point PPR play. Uh, he does not have the same upside he did with Philip rivers. Sorry. He just doesn't Tyrod's capable, but it's he's not Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers is going to be in the Hall of Fame. Tyrod Taylor is not. It's not a knock on Taylor. They're just different guys. Um, what are your thoughts on Ecker coming into this season too? Because that was a that was a great boon for fantasy owners and DFS players last year. And then Gordon came back, and then there were some other weeks where Eckler was still really good. Now that he is the guy, in your opinion, is this something we go right back to the Eckler well, or is there reason to be concerned because the quarterback play? No, I'm not concerned. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, lowest interception uh, percentage, I think, of anyone in NFL history. It's either first or second, uh, which means he's safe with the ball, which means a lot of short throws, which means Austin Eckler is going to be very involved. Probably a lot of Hunter Henry as well. Uh, he probably wants to body up Mike Williams, who's already hurt. Uh, but uh, I, I think that uh, Austin Eckler is going to be – I think I'll buy Austin Eckler more often than I'll buy Keenan Allen. I, and I think that's probably a little surprising that I agree to some with. people, but no, uh, I, no, I'm right there with you, baby. No, nope, yeah. sign me up. Let's do it. And, and uh, Hunter Henry probably will be my week one tight end. So uh, I, uh, I Why think he's, he's going to be cheap. He's going to be cheap. And I think he's going to be the safety blanket for Tyrod. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about him. Yeah. All right. I'm excited for our part two of our preview. And we want to remind everybody here, if you enjoy the program, make sure you subscribe to the pre-snap right here at Line Star app. We are everywhere you listen to podcasts, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Google, whatever it is, we're there. Again, it's the pre-snap podcast, courtesy of the Line Star apps or NFL DFS. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Line Star NFL and follow us uh, at Line Star app. Go get that Line Star app, download it and upgrade to the premium product. In the meantime, you can follow us on the Twitter machine at Joe Pisa PS17 and at Bogman Sports. That'll do it for us, but the story of the game goes on. There's nothing left to do now except break the huddle and win some cash. We'll see you next time, kids. You've been listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by LineStar. Hit subscribe, drop a review, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy football experts Joe Pisa Pia and Scott Bogman.